Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this video here today, I'm going to talk about what comes next. You won your uh, PhD entrance exam, now you are a PhD student. Congratulations. So, what happens after? Of course, I'm, although I'm targeting this specific category of students, most students, other students, of course, can benefit from this video. And also, it's not only about those who are now first year. Of course, we are talking about also the second year, if in, in this case. So in this video, I'm going to talk about four elements. Element one, I'm going to talk about the topic selection. Number two, I'm going to talk about supervision. And number three, I'm talking about time management. And the last one, I'm going to talk about the writing process. So let's start with the first one, the topic selection. One of the problems that most students, they come to me, they say, sir, I was obliged to choose this topic. I didn't have any saying in my topic of course what i would say directly of course you don't have any saying this project belongs to university to a particular laboratory you won and you're supposed to help this laboratory in this research so you are asked to do so and this is it this is the law of course sometimes you can have a saying for example let's say you won you are the first one and the list you can pick a topic pick you select a topic but of course this is only optional and it differs from university to university so this in this regard i have to be clear that the project belongs to university yourself you belong to that university you need to work along so this is final you may sometimes have the ability to introduce some minor changes, some minor modification. Of course, you can do this concerning the sample, the sampling, a uh, few things in the methodology, but you cannot deviate from the main theme of the project. Okay, number two, let's talk about the supervision. This comes also with the topic selection. If sometimes that uh, a teacher, a, a university teacher, for example, a researcher in this case, mm -hmm is well is well knowledgeable in a particular field so you kind of when you select the topic sometimes you are selecting the supervisor with it since you don't have a saying sometimes you also don't have a saying concerning the supervisor and here takes me to the other problem so the other problem with supervision you see one of the things that happens a lot during this would can happen a lot during the four years to spend that you are going to spend writing your research is conflict with your supervisor and this is something you really don't want your supervisor is your partner and the partner that has authority on you and this can lead to really really nightmares so how can i avoid that avoid this first thing i would say stick to formality formality is an important aspect something an, an attribute you need to associate your relationship your to your relationship to your supervisor how so the first thing the language i really find it surprising sometimes when a student comes to me and starts speaking in arabic and find it whoa what the hell come on you should speak in english and if you are a phd student now that is a must don't result to arabic especially in formal occasions maybe if there is an idea it's complicated and you don't have the language or you think that the language is going to fail you maybe just maybe and i'm still advised uh, strongly against this and okay formality also implies that when you go to a meeting don't go empty-handed i really find it that weird if you are a student you are a phd student so when you come to a meeting you should have you should have written something i don't know even if you haven't written anything just bring a paper with you said that i did i like it and highlight some aspect that you did that you did like so but never go empty-handed this is something so bad i find many students do and of course we are talking about high level you are advanced level here so please don't do that <coughs> okay formality also implies the mode of communication what kind of mode of communication here please use emails stick to emails emails are really safe although emails also are susceptible to any problem to pragmatic problem but still emails they they you you are you can you can ask your question and you allow the the, uh, the supervisor to answer at ease even if you have and you have access to your supervisor professional as a professional facebook or other means of communication i would still say use emails because you don't know when it's you shift from being too polite to bothering 
but an email is really a safe way to communicate. Of course, when you communicate an email, when you said I have an idea or something, please always try to provide something written, a document, a paper with you. Don't say, okay, I have this idea, I want to meet you and to tell you about it. This is part of the formality. It's really something important that you keep this and because to save your relationship with your supervisor in the long run of four years and trust me it's really a long time number two we are going to talk about time management i used to calculate you see let's say for example you have three years if i'm going to write a dissertation 300 pages give or take 300 pages if we say that the year has 356 days and let's say in, in each day i'm going to write a page which is not possible then you need then you need one year to write your dissertation so that one year but it doesn't happen this way one day you will write two pages then you will stay a month without writing anything so you will find yourself really in you will have problems so this is something i would I would need you to calculate. Of course, you need to write two articles, one article, I'm not sure now, and you need, of course, to participate. So if you do everything every day, you need to yes. So if you calculate it, you don't have much time. That's why you really need to, to really organize your time and start from now. Don't say, okay, I'm going to take this few months break, enjoying my happiness, because this happiness is going to fade very soon and you find yourself over, overwhelmed with work so this is why i would say please start early now this takes me to the writing process itself how can i write of course you need to start of course this is uh, by the way i'm going to start a series of videos and helping students in the methodology that's dealing with uh, with the, with the master two students or even PhD students. In this regard, I will be I will provide details. But for now, I want you to think first about when I'm going to start writing and how I'm going to start writing. And of course, one thing that I want you to to really remember that sometimes thinking about writing and thinking about what to write is also part of writing itself. You can spend one month thinking about an idea, I formulate it, trying to read it from different perspective. Then finally, you will come to that very concrete idea and you can translate it, render it into a piece of writing. This is so important. This is I'm going to provide details. But at least what I want to say now, this is why. So I talked about topic selection. I said, so, so important. You have to start. I, uh, I have find myself very obliged to talk about the supervision and the conflict that may arise is something you really need to pay attention to. You don't want to fall into this trap. And of course, the writing process, you need to calculate. You have, you may think you have a lot of years, but trust me, you don't. Time really is going to fly. So you need to start thinking from now, now gathering resources, really um, having a firm idea about what you are going to write. Of course, in an inshallah future video, we are going to talk about this uh, in detail, uh, where I'm going to help either uh, master two students and also, of course, other students. So uh, this is a short video. In fact, one of my followers asked this question and there it is. Inshallah, there will be more. Thank you so much and have a good day.